Hey everybody, this is a guide for getting started with IPython Notebook, which is a nice tool for creating documents with live code samples, charts, and more. It's going to run as a server, so it allows us to use it through any web browser, even remote ones if we have the proper setup. Since it uses the machine that it's running on to process the data, it's going to be ideal to run through an EC2 instance from Amazon, so we can really crank up the power and analyze some really big data sets. I'm going to be preparing a tutorial for that later on, but for now we're going to do it on our local machines. Once we're up and running, I'm going to go through a quick example of how we can use it with a sample data set. If you've made it this far, I'm sure you've already got set up to use Spark, but just in case you aren't, I'm going to quickly run over a few of the things you'll need to get through this guide. If you need more details on those setups, Joel and some others have made really nice tutorials for getting set up with Ubuntu, Java, Spark, etc. Alongside this video tutorial, I've prepared a written document that provides some extra resources. There are some helpful links, pictures, and code snippets that we can use as we get started with IPython Notebook. I'll make this available on my Dropbox and provide a link with this video. Let's go ahead and download the MovieLens 100K dataset available in Section A of my written portion. The link is provided right here. Once that's done downloading, we can extract the folder. This is the easiest way. I'm going to put it somewhere easy to find. I'll be using my desktop for this. So just drag the folder to your desktop and make sure it exists here. Once you've extracted the sample data set, go ahead and download the Anaconda installer. This is going to be a package that includes a lot of the dependencies required for running IPython Notebook. Once that's downloaded, let's go ahead and navigate to the file. We may need to right click, go to properties, permissions, and allow executing this file as a program. Now we can open up a terminal. You can do that through Control Alt T on your keyboard. Navigate to where you've downloaded it, in my case in the downloads folder. And we can use the dot slash and the name of the file to run the script. We're going to have to agree to the license. And there may be some quick way to skip this, but I'm not sure how. It's actually pretty annoying. Once you get near the end, be careful not to go past because you'll have to type yes. And then we can get going. I'll just let it go to the default of my home folder, slash Anaconda. This may take some time to install everything. It's going to run through a lot of the dependencies and get us ready to go. Once you're through with that, check back in and we'll continue. Near the end of the Anaconda installation script, it's going to ask if you'd like to prepend the install location to your path variable in the bash rc file. Uh, for this video, I'll go ahead and do that, but I will run through doing that manually later on just in case you missed this. The next step is to edit our bash rc file to make sure our system path variable works correctly with IPython. To do so, we're going to edit the bash rc file in our home directory. I'm going to use gedit for this. You can use vi or vim if you're using command line only. Let's use sudo gedit and our bash rc file. You may need to enter your password if you're using sudo for the first time in a little bit. At the bottom of this file you'll see where Anaconda probably put some automatic stuff here but I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite that with what I've put in the written portion of this tutorial. It's a simple copy and paste. So be sure to overwrite what Anaconda has put in. The other thing to take note of is that this Spark Home variable matches wherever you've installed your Spark. So wherever you go to run your slash bin, Spark shell, etc., make sure that this matches. Mine is installed in my home directory and the dot Spark folder. The only thing to watch out for is that this number does currently match what you have installed. And to do that, we can use a terminal window, navigate to our Spark folder, and navigate into Python, lib, and list the files, ls. Just make sure that this zip folder here matches the numbers of this here. If they match, you should be good to go. Save the bash rc file. 
return to your terminal window, and let's rerun bash RC. We do that with source, the home folder, and the bash RC file. For this next portion, I strongly suggest checking out the written portion of the tutorial so you can copy and paste these codes. Our next step is to create an IPython profile to use with PySpark. To do so, we'll use the IPython profile create. And you can put whatever you like here as your username, but I'm going to use something generic and go with PySpark. It's going to create a few config files for us. And once that's done, we can clear. Now we're going to generate a password for the account. To do so, we'll use ipython.c, write a little code in here, ipython.lib, import password, Get the password function, and write the output into the ipython profile, pyspark, or whatever you've named your profile, nbpassword.txt. Again, this is all in the written portion to copy and paste. I'm going to come up with a simple little password just to use for this example. Now, once that's done, we can go ahead and clear it out. And we're going to edit the file. I'll use gedit again in this case. Located at IPython, Profile, PySpark, or whatever you've named it. IPython Notebook Config. And here we're actually going to overwrite everything with what I have in the written portion of the tutorial, section B, number three. We'll copy this here, paste it in, save it, close it, return to the terminal, and clear it out just to keep things clean. Now we're actually going to create and edit a file this time, again with just sudo gedit. It's going to be dot ipython profile PySpark, or whatever your name was, start up, and we'll call this file 00-PySpark-setup.py. Zero, zero Once again, copy and paste the code from the provided written portion, paste it, save it, return to terminal, and we can clear. If all went according to plan, we should be able to put in IPython notebook, point it to our profile we just created, and launch notebook. Due to the configuration that we set up earlier, IPython notebook may not launch in your browser immediately after starting it in your terminal. So to get into it, so we can start using it, go to your browser and navigate to localhost colon 8880. It'll take us to the login page or we can log into the password that we set up earlier. Once inside it, let's create a new notebook just to show you how things start. Every new project in notebook will give you an initial cell code to play with. This is going to take any kind of Python code and we can use the Python to work with Spark and analyze the data sets that we have. Uh, for whatever reason you want to change what it is, for example to Markdown, we can click on cell and change its cell type to whatever we'd like. I'll show you quickly a little markdown. Once we've entered what we'd like, we can apply it with the play button. It's going to run the cell and apply it to whatever type it is. With a code block in Python, we can enter a little code, and once we run it, we'll see the output. All notebook projects will be run as a consistent application. So if we were to create a variable in one cell, we could then continue on with the new cell and use that variable. And we'll see the output carried on from the cell above it. If you'd like to delete a cell, come to edit, and we can just delete them. We can also insert cells above or below with the insert. For example, I'll put one above this one I'm currently working in, or we can make it. Then if you'd like to run multiple cells, 
we can come here, either run all, run all above the one we're working in, but in my case I'll run all below what we're working in. And it'll apply everything, including that cell. Let's go ahead and take a look at the project that I've created earlier based on the MovieLens 100K dataset that we downloaded earlier. First off, we'll get out of this one. Go ahead and close and halt it, meaning it's going to shut down the instance of everything in that project. I'll delete mine for now since we're done with that example. I'll also offer this one as a download that you can import into your own and play around with it some. So you can see I've got a little bit of markdown here. If you'd like to edit any cell, you can just double click on it and you'll get the code that you can come in and edit. Um, I've got some code samples here along with the descriptions of what's going on. Uh, but for now, I'm going to first come in and run all of the cells just to make sure we've got current output. And the little star inside means that it is still waiting to run this code and you'll see them pop in in just a moment. Now that it's done running everything, we can start taking a look at what's happening here. So my initial piece here is just to kind of get everything set up and ready to go. Um, just telling it I'm going to run locally, uh, creating the Spark context with some of the configurations that we need, and pointing it to that text file that we downloaded earlier on. Uh, because this is set up as a Spark context text file, we can take a look at the first line from it and get an idea of how everything's set up so we can then make sense of all this data. So here I'm just kind of running up and keeping account of everything and printing out the output so we can get a general idea of how many people we have. Um, each user has an associated age that we can take a look at and uh, we also are allowed to generate little charts to get a visualization of the data. And we'll notice that we're skewed towards a young-ish crowd around 29, 30 and take a look at maybe their occupation to see if that has any correlation. After you do a bit of work that you can look at in the project file, we'll see that well, most of our viewers are students and that would explain the younger age. Looking at another piece from the data set, we can load up the information about the movies themselves. We'll take a look at how each line is set up so we can start to make sense of it. Get a total of all our movies and for example here we'll just take a look at the years they were created. I believe this data set goes up through 1998 so we'll see relative to years before uh, what ages the movies are. And we can again generate a little chart based on that. I suggest taking a look at this, downloading it, playing with it a bit and being sure that you've updated the paths here to point to your proper data set and then being sure to run it in order. You may come across an error such as this and it's simply caused by already having run the cells once. Let's see here. And we can basically see that the spark context already exists. So to fix this error we can just shut it down. We'll halt it. Make sure that it's not running. Start it again and you can rerun your cells. You may come across this a couple times playing with it. Not a big deal. Once you're finished playing with a project, be sure to shut it down properly with the close and halt. Make sure no instances of a project are running. You can also check this tab. Once you're done, go ahead and log out. You can close it up. Control and C. Tell it yes, you want to shut it down. And you're good to go. Hopefully this tutorial helped you out, and if you have any questions, just let me know, David Singler, or contact Dr. Zhang. Thank you.